Hey guys, welcome back. Next we're going to tackle the pick up and place key um, little mechanic we've got going on here. Uh, I've just for the, the key, I've just used a normal static mesh from the UDK. If we right click, finding content browser, and I'll just drag my content browser over here. We can see that it's just a, a bizarre pickup from the Unreal Tournament stuff. Uh, it's, it's some kind of power pickup for the Unreal Tournament series. I've just used it as a key here. So place that in your level. I've duplicated it into where we're going to place it. We've got one key already in place here. And then what I've done here is add a material over the actual pickup. So it's kind of like a, a, holo, a translucent type effect. So it kind of indicates to the player where they need to place this next key. So the way I created this material really quickly is if we just open up the content browser and I, I, I save it in the light shootout package that you guys can access and just simply right click and create a new material and that will bring up the material editor which I'll just drag over here and basically all I've done is held down number three and press left mouse click and in the scene or alternatively you can add a, a constant and this is a constant three vector so and then just uh, put the R value as one here so that creates a red node and then I just plug that into the emissive and then to make it kind of translucent I've added the opacity uh, I've added a constant where you can hold down number one and left mouse click or you can just add a normal constant here I've set it an opacity of 0.6 but you can have 0 0.2, 0 0.3 whatever works for you really and then plug that into the opacity channel the one thing that you do need to access down if you just click this grey box here in the material tab, excuse me, uh, you can just go to blend mode and change that to blend translucent and that will uh, help you a lot. So we'll just shut this down now. And so we've got our material here. Uh, the way we apply it to a mesh is to click on the mesh, hit F4 for the, the actor properties and go down to static mesh uh, and materials and you can see we've plugged in that material there so you just press the plus button there it'll add a, a zero material and then with the material selected in the content browser you can just go ahead and add it into that slot there so that's how we did that um, moving on we will change what we need to do is change these again into interpactors anything that we're interacting with we need to make sure we can uh, toggle and move so with this one here and this one uh, we will select them both holding down control and right click convert to mover and that should do it uh, I will change uh, collision now to block all just so we don't have any problems placing the uh, keys uh, next we need to actually duplicate this material across so just hold down ALT and we'll move the static mesh so we've got two duplicates and then hit F4 and what you want to do is remove the material from this object ideally you could have done it before you added the material so you don't have to go into so many tabs but it's in the dynamic S actor static mesh rendering and then just X that out so right now we've got the normal mesh and the, uh, the translucent mesh. The reason why we do this is we're just going to toggle the state. So when we place that, it'll just toggle either one between. You would do want them on top of each other, uh, but for ease of selecting them for now, we'll just uh, go with this setup for now. Uh, another thing, you need to hit this uh, properties on the, the material that you duplicated, and in the actual um, tab under display for the properties, just tick hidden. And that would mean that if we just, in our viewport, if we just press G, it'll show game and it hides it for in-game. So then we'll just toggle these. Okay. So that's the, the basic setup for now. We need a way to pick this mesh up. You can do a couple of things. We can have a touch trigger or we can have a trigger volume. Because we used a, a trigger over for this setup here, uh, I'll, I will use a trigger volume uh, in this case. So I'll just... Uh, select whichever actor I want to encompass and go up to the brushes and hit the cube key there so we've got a box around here if we just zoom out 
And if we just hide all these meshes, I'm just going to select all the floor meshes and select match and static meshes this class. And I'll just hide these and then we can see much better in here. So that's a, a 256 uh, grid there. I mean, that, that'll probably work as soon as you get into there. I mean, it picks it up automatically. Again, you could do a use used key, but for simplicity sake, we'll just do a trigger volume for now. So, we'll uh, with this red builder brush selected, we will right click on the volumes again and add a trigger volume. We don't need a dynamic trigger volume for this case, we'll just select trigger volume. And then, if we move the red builder brush out of the way, we've got this green volume around here, and then we can get going. Uh, you can, you know, not make it go through the roof uh, and just tidy things up a bit, maybe make it a bit smaller, but they're, they're the things that you can do yourself. So, with the trigger volume selected, we can open up Kismet again, and we'll just sequence this down here, uh, maybe just make it look a bit nicer. Um, I'm just holding down Control to move these around and Control and Alt to select. So, Control and Alt, we'll right click. Uh, create a new sequence and this was the valve sequence so I'll hold valve there and uh, put that into place there so we still got our trigger volume selected in perspective we will right click in empty space new event using trigger volume touch so now anything that goes off the touch will um, affect the level so what we want to do is um, first of all we'll select this uh, key here and right click, new action, toggle, toggle hidden. What we want to do is just go to toggle and tab right click your interpactor. Right, so what I'll actually do here is see the, the opaque translucent material. I uh, will hit F4 and go to hidden as well. So we'll check that. So both of these in game will actually be hidden. But what we'll do is with that selected, we'll add it to this toggle here as well. So, when we pick up, basically what we're doing, we touch this trigger volume here, and then this toggles, and so does this. So, this toggles from unhidden to hidden, and this toggles from hidden to unhidden, if you get that. Okay, so that works there. Uh, I think that's all we need for that. We could technically get rid of this static mesh as well. We can uh, convert, convert to mover, um, and then add that there if you wish it's just something extra that you could possibly do so now that we've got that in place that's the first trigger now we need the next one so what I'll do here is I'll create a smaller trigger volume so with this key selected I'll again click on the brush I'll just move this just to get it into focus and now we, we really only want a box if we right click on the cube brush and maybe 128, 128, 128. Um, I mean, that's, that's still a little too big, so we'll try 64. I always use, you know, multiples of two just to fit on the grid nicely. And, you know, that, that should work. So, with our red builder brush selected, a 64 by 64 by 64 box, uh, we'll right click here and again create. This time we'll create a dynamic trigger volume. The reason for this is if you walked into this trigger, this trigger would already be active if we had a normal trigger volume, therefore you could kind of skip the, the step of picking up the key. So we need a way to turn this volume on. So we'll just go with dynamic trigger volume for now uh, and move this out of the way. So we can select this. First thing we need to do is have this uh, not enabled to start off with. So with it selected, hit F4 to build the properties and then the dynamic trigger volume just uncheck enabled. So this isn't enabled on level startup. The first thing we need to do is enable it. So, uh, go back into Kismet. Uh, following this uh, chain of Kismet, we'll hold down the T key or left mouse and left mouse button, or go to action, toggle, and toggle. And then from the out, go to turn on. And with the, the, the dynamic trigger volume selected, just add that to your target there. So that'll turn on this volume as soon as we pick up the key. So all that's sorted. Now we need to actually set up the process of changing the keys. So, trigger volume there, right click, new event using dynamic trigger volume this time, touch, and then what we want to be doing again is toggling these two uh, keys here. So we'll right click, new action, toggle, uh, toggle hidden, we'll go to touch, 
and toggle. So since since we picked up the previous key, this has become unhidden, and this key is still hidden. So we're just toggling the two states, and that is all all you need to do for now. Uh, we'll just tie things up a bit. We'll move these back into place, and you guys can go ahead and test this out and make sure it works, and then we'll come back and evolve the kismet. Right, so I got that working off the screen and it should be working for you guys also. If it's not working then go back and over the steps and make sure you are working. The thing that stands out for me is it's kind of a bit silent. It, you're not sure whether you've picked up the key and the player's not really indicated to that either. So we'll add a little sound here so when we pick up and place the objects then uh, it'll kind of make a sound. So go back, going back into Kismet, what we'll do is uh, we'll add the sound for when we initially pick up so if we just right click here action um, sound play sound and then we'll hook it out to play and then in, in the content browser here I've just scrolled down to the sounds from uh, UDK game UT3 uh, into uh, pick up power ups I found a nice berserk pickup sound here. You can use any of these. Make sure you're selecting the sound cues and not the sound waves. If you only want to see the sound cues, then you can tick this box up here and it'll only show the ones that you can actually select. So I'm going with A power up berserk pickup cue. You could search that in the box if you can't find it yourself, but this is the one that I'm going for. And then in the Kismet, we'll just go, go to the play sound in the bottom right and just press that green button and it'll add that sound there. And I'll also add another sound to the end of this kismet I'll just uh, select that play sound control C control V which pastes it down and then go to the out and when you've placed that key then that that should work so that's all we need for now I uh, hope that gives you a good indication and just have a play around with different keys that you could use and, and different setups. The, the actual Kismet setup itself is just basically a bunch of toggles and you can play around with the types of trigger used. You could use uh, a trigger that you have to uh, use in Kismet by pressing the E on the keyboard which might things, make things a bit more difficult but just have fun with it really.